Ladies and gentlemen, it's 9.01 on a Thursday night. In fact, it's May 6th, 2021, and this is Crawl Space Live. I'm Tim here today with Lance. What's up, Lance? Oh, it is so good to see all of these folks who have gathered around. The bells have tolled their nine chimes from my quiet Hamlet community. Welcome to True Crime <laughs> Thursday. Thank you, Lord Reed. <laughs> And uh, we are being joined by two right. very, very special guests here tonight. It is Amy and Megan, professors, dare I say, a Amy and Megan of Women and Crime and Direct Appeal. How are you doing tonight? I'm so happy to be here. So happy we could figure out how to log in. Yes, I'm still guest, though. I don't know how to make that say my name, but I'll just be guest 8258. Well, that's okay, guest 8258. Yeah, we'll just refer to you as Professor Guest 8258. <laughs> Every time well, you were uh, a professor, now you're you're stripped of your title if you can't right. figure it out. <laughs> okay. See what happens? See what happens? Two minutes into the get vocal and you no longer you, you've just been stripped of your, your uh credentials. It's ours now, actually. I think it's ours. We, we yeah. officially have it now. Yeah. Professor Tim, how Thank are you, you tonight? I'm wonderful, Professor Reindeer Star. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> professor Lance already sounded like a professor with his accent. You know, he had like the professorial, like, oh, from, you know, the Hamlet. And I mean, more like literature, but. You know. Accent? What yes, accent? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I teach at Oxford. Exactly. Well, well, if you are watching this on Twitter. Or on Facebook. Mm, I don't know about YouTube tonight if that if that uh, hookup worked. But if you're on one of those two other social platforms, why don't you click the link associated with that little video that you're watching this on and toggle your butt up on over to get vocal. Don't uh, be because, a jerk. And don't be a jerk about it. I mean, it's plain and simple. It's real easy if you think about it. <laughs> There's a chat room here. Everyone's going to be wanting to talk to you. You want to talk to them. We're all talking about what we're talking about. I got to say, oh, we're I'm excited. I'm excited about tonight's show because we have guest 8258 and we have <laughs> Megan. And, and they're, they're, they're every time we speak with these fine. Well, you can keep your credentials for tonight. These fine <laughs> credentialed uh, women. I walk away personally feeling like I can do something that I didn't know I could do prior to the conversation. Um, I feel like uh, I feel like I learned something and it's going to be productive and that's going to be a change of pace for me tonight. Usually <laughs> all I think about is my bladder towards the end. That's probably not going to be the case tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Lance. That was very heartfelt. No, that was very nice, Lance. Thank you. We have such a great time and we're super psyched to like delve into a million things with you guys. Thank you for having Double us it. on. Seriously. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Well, good. Thank you. And thanks for, for coming on and hanging out with us. There's a whole chat room here and, uh, you know, feel free to ask some questions, shoot some questions, uh, at our, our lovely guests here, Amy and Megan, or I should say, I guess, eight, two, five, uh, five, eight, <laughs> eight, so, eight, two, five, eight. <laughs> <laughs> tell us what is going on with women and crime and direct appeal your two podcasts that are huge hits in the true crime lands oh i don't know if i did huge but thank you amy you want to talk a little bit about women in crime and then maybe i can take over direct appeal sure. sure so women in crime what are we up to episode now we just recorded 40 or oh, 51 episodes i believe we've released what megan i don't even know what number 40 something we're in the um, high 40s. I think we're up to like 48 or something like that. Yeah, I think it's been about a year now, and it's great. I mean, the listener engagement is wonderful. We have a list about 200 names deep of cases to cover. So, well, so for people who don't know, tell them what we do on women in crime. Like, tell them how we. Oh, how, yes, what, sorry. How. Yes, yes, yeah. So, we every. Two weeks, we release an episode and we talk about either a victim, an offender, sometimes they're one in the same, or a trailblazer in the field. And we kind of break down the case, what happened, but then we also talk about what 
theories, criminological theories can help us understand what happened. Um, we're both criminologists with some real world experience. So we try to break it down and talk about whether or not the system got it right. You want to add on to that? Yeah, it was um, it was really the result when we did direct appeal one, like a lot of people were interested in issues with involving females and they were writing in with like case suggestions, which was so cool. We started keeping a list and all of a sudden our list got so long and we we're like, what do we do with this list? Right. And we we're like, ah, women and crime. Let's do something episodic where we can cover a different case every time and try to like hit a lot of these cases. I mean, we can't do a deep dive necessarily on all of them, but. Um, we definitely uh, try to get into the major points in each case. And, you know, it's it's a little bit of story. It's a little bit of analysis. It's a little bit of criminologist and then kind of a wrap up. And uh, guest eight, two, five, eight, you had said that <laughs> you um you you talk about uh, trailblazers. Yes. Trailblazers. You said trailblazers. I'm assuming you weren't speaking of the basketball team. Um, what what do you mean by trailblazers? Well, if you guys were women, we would cover you. No, basically we cover people who have made a, a dent in the field. Um, so I'm sure you've heard of Kathleen Zellner. So Megan covered Kathleen Zellner. I covered a woman by the name of Barbara Ray Bettner, who does um, a lot of work in genetic genealogy. Um, who else? Judge Esther Salas, who became a victim of a violent crime, but really is well known because she was the first Hispanic woman on the federal court. So we try to um, not only focus on crime stories, but on women who have made a difference in the field as well. So when you cover somebody who is an expert in, um, in uh, the genetic genealogy, what's the feedback like? Because I, I feel like that's an intimidating topic. People love to see the result of something like that, but digging into that, I feel it could be a little bit, um, you have to, I, I feel like you have to deliver it in a certain way to make it consumable. Yeah, so the way we present it is not, so we're talking about her, how she was somebody who was very involved in genetic genealogy, but we're framing it within certain cases that were, you know, that she worked on. Um, so the Golden State Killer case. So, you know, the podcast is episodic. Each episode is about a different case. When we talk about a woman who works in the field, we kind of talk a little bit about several cases that they were instrumental in, you know, either solving or moving, you know, the needle further in a certain area. We talked about you, Amy, you covered one that was pretty cool. It was the Angela Samoto case and Sheila Wysocki. Oh, so yeah. Angela it. Samoto was a victim, a murder victim, and her best friend like went ahead and got a private eye license and basically went out to become a private investigator to help solve her case yeah. and wound up in the field that way. So I think th right. that story was certainly really engaging for people who yeah. thought, wow, that's an amazing thing that your friend went out and did and then actually became instrumental in other cases. Yeah, I think we like those crossover ones that kind of check more than one box. Somebody who could be an advocate but was also a victim and also you know, sometimes an offender as well. I mean, you see, you know, it, it's not so clear cut. I think that's what we like about a lot of these cases. Can you tell us a little bit more about that um, story? Because I know Sheila Wysocki, she does her own podcast. And I remember meeting her at, I think it was the True Crime Podcast Festival mm -hmm. in Chicago. We had a, a pretty brief conversation, but she was great. Um, and so, yeah, just just a, one, I, I've heard this story a little bit, but um, but I just like to know a little bit more if you guys don't mind. Yeah, sure. So Angela Samoda, um, she was murdered and the case really went unsolved for years. I don't I don't remember exactly how long. It's been a little while since I covered it. Megan, do you remember? Were you is that what you it was a, I mean it was several years, but I, I um no, I was gonna just jump in and say like they they very quickly focused or honed in on her. Was it her boyfriend? Of and course, yeah. They always honed in on the boyfriend. And who got, ooh. I mean, like a, you know, a real taint over his name for, I mean, such a long time. Yeah. And then, you know, it was, I think the police were very easily able to just say, yeah, it was probably this guy. And they kind of dropped the ball. And, you know, Sheila says, you know, it just, it wasn't okay for her that there wasn't justice for her, you know, one of her best friends. And so she became a private eye. So she was able to get access to some files and she's not the one who necessarily solved the case. But because of her persistence, she constantly called them and now she had a private eye background. So they took her more seriously. They reopened the case and they were able to find out um, the individual who ended up murdering her best friend was brought to justice. 
And then and it was a stranger. It wasn't her boyfriend. It was it was, it was not a, her boyfriend. Know, stranger attack. Yeah, and then she ends up doing a lot of work now on other cases. Uh, Megan, do you remember the name of the other case? It's slipping my mind right now with the hammock. Uh, I I know it, but I just can't think of it. The uh, girl who I'm sure somebody in the chat knows this case. The case where the girl was at it was like a music festival or something. And oh, uh, Megan, I don't hear you. There's some tech. It sounds like Megan. Yeah. <laughs> do you hear that, Megan? <laughs> um, Tim's going to start free filing. Yeah. <laughs> I will. I'll get the handheld mic going. Yeah, um, Megan is dropping mad beats. <laughs> Megan, oh, you... wow. I didn't see this coming. She's got a <laughs> With... PhD in uh, MCing. I think this happened a couple weeks ago, too. Megan, can you yeah. refresh real quick? Can you refresh? Does that make sense? Let me type. Uh, uh, write down refresh yes. somewhere. <laughs> Megan, we don't hear you. So, hey, can you guys? You guys can hear me, so I could just keep laughing. Right, we can hear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I gotta look up the name of this case because now it's driving me oh. nuts. So it's um, so basically, there was a young girl who went to a festival, a music festival with friends, and she died. And of course, I can't find it now. I know people know this case. It's a very famous case. Case, come on, people in the chat, help me out here. Anyway, Jody um, said it's the irk, 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 irk case. <laughs> <laughs> Not Rebecca Maloney, no, but I'm gonna find it because now at this point, I want to be able to tell everyone so you could say, Oh, yes, we know that case. Um, so anyway, so she does a lot of work now, she has her own organization and she works a lot with victims and victims' families. Oh, I still hear it, Megan, it's still doing it. She can't stop laying down the beats. She's addicted. <laughs> Can you hear us, Megan? No. Huh. Weird. Yeah, try to refresh. Did okay, she refresh? Maybe if you log in, in as can you log in as guest eight two five nine? Oh, I you <laughs> the next that. guest up. <laughs> uh Jennifer is saying it's it's Lauren Agee. Yes, thank you. Jennifer for the win. I absolutely knew it. I'm sorry, Megan said, can you hear anything? No, just weird. How do I explain the noise? Just weird noises from you. I don't know how to explain that. Can you hear us, Megan? Megan, can you hear us? No. Okay. Um, yes, the Lauren AG case she's working on. Megan, refresh your page if you can. Um, refresh page. <laughs> this happened uh a Can couple I tell her to log off then log back in yeah 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 maybe just just pop off or or just like uh maybe even change browsers okay i told her to log off and then log back in okay okay and she's gone <laughs> the so. last time this happened it was actually much better because it was a i think it was like a full word that was getting uh repeated so it was, it was pretty good. I, I don't remember. I don't remember it. It could have been anything. It was like, um, or something. It was like, um, um, um. Do you see Jody said club crawl space? That's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, so yeah, so that's where we are. We're doing a lot of work on direct appeal too. Yeah, um, I heard. Yeah. And, and you're oh, calling I've... it direct appeal two now, which is is funny because there's a direct appeal one and now you've got this the sequel season is that is that what's happening no so it's basically no it's just direct appeal it's just a new season so okay. it's just direct appeal season one uh season two right. and uh, it's a whole new case a whole new individual who um we believe well possibly believe has been wrongfully convicted and the interesting part it's a no crime wrongful conviction do you guys know about those kind of cases no crime wrongful conviction yeah. I don't I don't know any case specifically, but that term just came uh like on my radar recently. You said what is it? Well, there's no I don't know. I just kind of heard somebody talk about it. I it's don't a know. no crime wrongful conviction. Yeah. Uh, Are you talking you about direct appeal too without me? Very briefly. She very was briefly. oh my god, Megan, she's like now that it was Megan's ridiculous. Gone, I get I can Megan's finally gone. squeeze totally... her out of this project. She totally did. You're on right. a delay still. Um, 
are on a delay. Anyway, um, do you hear us, Megan? Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah, no, you're just on a little bit of a delay, but we're going to. I don't no, know no, what happened. I logged out and logged in. Okay. All right. Well, you're here now. That's all that matters. <laughs> Thank you um, so much. Go right ahead. and pill too. Fun stuff. No, so a no crime wrongful conviction is the worst type of wrongful conviction because it's a wrong. It's a case in which an individual is wrongfully convicted for a crime that actually never occurred. So this might be somebody, for example, Joanne Parks we covered. Joanne Parks was wrongfully convicted of the murder of her three children in an arson, which turned out to be an accidental fire that killed the children. So it's a wrongful conviction. It's not that there was another perpetrator. It's that there was no crime at all. Another one we covered was Patricia Stallings. In that case, her child died from, he had a pre-existing medical condition, and she was wrongfully convicted of poisoning him because they they found what seemed to be arsenic in his blood, but it was actually just some compound that resembled arsenic that was just from a genetic disorder. So her baby, he was three months old. He actually died from an undiagnosed medical condition. She was wrongfully convicted for his murder. Therefore, it was a no crime wrongful conviction. How does how, how do things like this happen? Because there are crimes that have been committed that have, I don't, I don't want to say like obvious um, solutions to them, that take years to unfold in the court system. Um, how does something like that happen where the crime was actually not a crime, it was an accident, or like uh, you said, there was some toxicology thing that, that would break it down and show you that it wasn't actually I mean, a crime? How does it happen so fast? I think Megan and I probably would both agree there's a lot of different factors, but I think tunnel vision is probably the biggest factor. Megan, would you agree? Yeah, and I think when it comes to women and children, also very quick to judge women whose children die, to be honest. I think there's a, a judgment of like a bad kind of mother judgment when it when it involves women, to be honest. Um, that's the, the gender lens, you know, kind of approach, I think. Yeah, and I don't know if you've all heard of shaken baby syndrome, but that was another, that's another kind of area of junk science um, of you know, women, mostly women, not only women, but the large majority of women, often a mother or if not a mother, then a caretaker has been wrongfully convicted of killing their baby because there was some expert that claimed that their baby was shaken to death when in fact the baby died from what we now know as SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, or again, some other pre-existing undiagnosed medical condition. So they're just the most heartbreaking, you know, types of crimes. They are. I think, a lot, uh, you know, the ones that involve children, too, of course, you're going to assume just like you assume a spouse is more likely to, you know, if a, if a wife dies, it's more likely a husband. If it's a child, people assume it's most likely the parents. So and it's assumption um, based on the relationship and then the tunnel vision that kicks in. I definitely agree with that. Are these so, like yeah. are they are they recent cases that you're looking at? any of them or all of all of them i don't know i think i think what, where my head was going at was like have we progressed a bit in yeah. society where this is not a thing anymore or are we talking about something that happened in like the 90s uh, there were a lot of, um, they were, there were, I would say, we've progressed in terms of the arson cases. So Amy's covered a couple of them. And I don't know if you guys know Cameron Todd Willingham. He was executed for the murder of his children. Um, they said that he started a fire in his house that killed his children. In our field, it's widely viewed, I wouldn't say completely, as a wrongful conviction and that it was an accidental fire. So in terms of the no crime convictions that are arson related, a lot of progress, whole different approach to arson. It's more of a science now where people have experiments and they replicate experiments and try to find out where it used to just be like an investigator walking through and documenting, yeah, these patterns look this way, you know, which is not, you shouldn't discount all of that, but it's science more now. So I think we've made progress in certain fields and I, I, as the science progresses, of course, but I mean, some of the, the no crime wrongful convictions that we're talking about are recent and yeah. The one that we're covering in Direct Appeal Season 2 is definitely more recent. It's definitely post-2007. Yeah, Oops. and also an another type of no crime wrongful conviction that I find fascinating are cases in which an individual commits suicide, but somebody is wrongfully convicted for their murder. So right. those, that's another example of these types of crimes. Or a lot. 
I don't, I don't have the numbers on how much. I think it's enough that it's, it's worth talking about. I don't know that we know how often it happens. I don't know an exact number, and I wouldn't say a lot, but anecdotally, I know a good number of cases just from watching the episodes, the datelines, and just researching. I do know, you know, a number of cases in which there's, uh, it's, it's, is it suicide or is it murder? Yeah, we, we've covered uh, a couple of, we've covered a couple of them on our show on women in crime, right? Ellen uh, Ray Lavina, Greenberg, Cindy James, Lavina Johnson. Lavina, yeah, I mean, on our show of our 40 something episodes, we've definitely covered about four already that are was it a suicide or was it murder? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely think that I've definitely seen cases where that's a question. Um, I guess just ones where someone has been convicted for something that was later uh, deemed a, a suicide is is something I hadn't heard of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Ellen Greenberg is a case. Did we release that already? Mm -hmm. Yes, we released it last week. Or like, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, so Ellen Greenberg was a case we recently released where she was a woman who they claim it was a suicide, but she was stabbed several times in the back of her neck. And if you look at the crime scene photos, it's just, it, I don't want to ruin it. I'd rather you listen to it and tell me what you all think or, you know, do your own research on it. But that's one example of a case that I think it's, the police had tunnel vision. They saw a woman. They saw a woman who was in a home that has, you know, like the latches on doors that apartment buildings have or hotels have. What are the? Is there a certain name for those? It's like the latch. No, 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 it's the flip latch. I we a flip have... latch. Yeah, I don't like know if that's the right word, but it's like you know, a. They have them in hotel rooms, and they make you feel safe, like no one can come in. <laughs> yeah, but... it's an illusion. But the illusion of it. So basically this woman was found in her apartment with the door shut with the latch on and no one else was in the apartment. So they said she had to have killed herself, but they didn't consider the fact that there's very easy ways to manipulate those types of latches to make it look as if it was locked from the inside, but somebody could have left and then locked it. But either way, it's really, um, I would say it's an unsolved murder at this point. I don't understand the tunnel vision part of that because I, I don't get like how instead of looking at one of those latches and thinking, OK, someone might take a wire hanger and manipulate it so they could stand outside the yeah. door and pull it shut. Like you can do that. That's more re reasonable in my head. And I'm a stupid podcaster than <laughs> than than looking at stab wounds in the back of a neck and saying, well, she must have done it to herself. It's suicide. Well, well, we left out a lot of information. You know, they went by the boyfriend's, the fiance's testimony that he came home and found her like that. And they said, oh, OK, so okay. she must have been like that. The injuries that she sustained are not at all consistent with suicide. It seems like that was just, uh, yeah, a dismissal and outright. Oh, yeah. And and I look at it, you like Lance, I, I, just common sense. You don't have to be a criminologist, an investigator. Uh, you know, you don't have to be any of these things to look at. The scenario and look at her injuries and say, I don't think this is even possible, you know, uh, let alone probable. Mm -hmm. We we covered Cindy James, too, and I think that was um, uh, a really interesting case as well. And it's funny because I see Shiloh's on here and I know that she came on and talked about Cindy James with us. But that was another really fascinating, bizarre case that's never been solved in which the police, this woman claimed to have been stalked for years. There were all these incidents of violence against her. She was hospitalized and eventually she was found um, dead by, you know, a morphine injection, strangulation, um, you know, a, a number of kind of assaults. And the police chalked it up to a suicide. And it was also like just not that plausible, I guess. I mean, you know, possible, but not really plausible. Um, so that was another case that we had covered. Anyway, I don't and know no, no, no. Like how quick here, do they go to suicide on that? They went to, they did an inquest on like Cindy James. This was also in another country. You know, this was um, Canadian and this was a long time ago. They did an inquest, but they went to suicide pretty quickly on her, like forming that conclusion. They had done an investigation and they couldn't find out who was stalking her. Um, and they couldn't, you know, when they surveilled, they weren't catching anyone. And they concluded that she must have been doing this to herself for attention and that she had um, a couple of different, you know, disorders you might say um so you know they did conclude that pretty quickly and then an inquest later came to the same conclusion it's definitely when people ask us what's the one case that keeps you up at night both of us almost always say cindy james 
Yeah, it was just um, the most bizarre case. But anyway, I think the point, I think main point or big point, right, Amy, is that one third of all convictions, wrongful convictions are no crime. Can you believe that? That number was shocking wow. to me. That number blew me away. I went, wow, 33% are there's no crime at all? Yeah. That's a big number. I'm I'm actually really glad that we're tackling that issue too for our next um, podcast. And we had spoken too with. Do you guys know Jessica Henry? Yeah. Hold, hold on a second. Hold yeah, on. Yeah. Can I you see say that again? Yeah. I I, I want to be get that, that statistic has to be incomplete though because how do you know how many wrongful convictions there are? Well, based uh, among the wrongful convictions, it's never you can never know the whole population of wrongful convictions. But the National Registry of Exonerations has identified over 2,700 wrongful convictions to date. Based on their data, one third of wrongful convictions are no crime. So yeah, we'll never know. You can't, you can't possibly know the real number, but so it's an understatement, probably, if anything. Always is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. It's incredible. I know it's shocking. Like in our, you know, in our justice system too, it's completely shocking. And you know, so many of them, uh, so many of them, them, uh, so many of these cases are. The ones I've examined, I'm like, gosh, I look at this and I don't know how um, jurors didn't see reasonable doubt. I mean, I'm, I wasn't a juror on the case, but mm -hmm. I have a hard time with a lot of these cases. <laughs> I know exactly. I I see uh, so much. I don't know. I see reasonable doubt on so many of these cases, and I'm I'm shocked about some of the convictions that we know. Almost all of them, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Heidi here in the chat room has an interesting question. She says, has there ever been any known diabolical suicide that was intentionally made to look like murder to mm. blame someone that they were angry with? Oh, the answer is definitely yes. I just can't think of one. I know the case. I know the case. Go ahead, um, um, with the mansion, the murder of the child. Rebecca's. No, you're thinking. Yeah, oh, that's it. Rebecca's a how? No, isn't that it? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think Shiloh mentioned that in the chat, that case about something. She did. Yeah, Rebecca Zahau, Um, But that, oh, yeah, they tried. So in that case, the belief is she committed suicide, but the reality is likely that she was murdered and they tried to make it look like suicide. Is, was right. that not the question? I think. Was that the question, guys? <laughs> no, yeah, I the think question. the question's opposite. It was opposite. Oh, yeah. shoot. Okay. All right. Wait. All right. So I misunderstood. Oh, wait. Shiloh, Shiloh you misunderstood it, too. All right. Go ahead. No, she was just bringing yeah. that case up, Shiloh. Oh, oh okay. So I'm, it. All right, but I'm I think the question was, did somebody kill themselves and try to frame? Has someone ever killed yes. themselves and try to frame someone? Which the answer is yes. I just don't know a case offhand. Oh, God. I just watched it. On list where it was commit suicide, they make it look like murder to blame it on someone else. That's a hundred percent happened. Definitely, I just, I, ju I just either watched or listened to a Dateline about a woman who definitely um, did that. She she killed herself, and she actually killed herself and her husband, and tried to frame someone else. It was the craziest case, and how they discovered it. I can't remember the name of it, so I don't know like tons of cases where that happens. And obviously, I misunderstood it because I thought it was the opposite, but mm -hmm. um, I. I, I'm positive within the last week, I just heard uh, a, an episode on a woman. If anyone dead. can think of one, I would love to hear it. But I don't, there's got to be <laughs> one out there, but sorry. I, I'm going to fake, I'm going to come up with a, has anyone ever faked their own, <laughs> faked their own suicide to make it look like a murder to frame somebody else? <laughs> to prank? <laughs> Like a Gone Girl is what you basically. Yeah, yes. yeah, we're getting into that territory. Oh wow! Oh there's yeah, not, I didn't realize that's where I was going. There's not yeah. really. Um, there's not a real life Gone Girl. They they said like Denise Huskins was, but that was a true case. So <gasps> oh, it was not. Gosh, that case is so good. You're but so what a great Huskins movie. or Haskins? I don't know which one, but I know it's such a good movie. I love oh, it. Now but... you're, sorry, now you're talking. Now you're gonna bring up Sherry Papini, and my head's just gonna start spinning. Do you guys know Sherry, Sherry? Papini? Yes, you have to talk you about that, that case. Movie. Yeah, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. She she was kidnapped, right? And she was found on the side of the road. Is that um, on a highway? Is that? Yeah, that's pretty much the, you know, the short version. But it's it's so shocking. This poor woman, if she was actually the victim of this crime, you know, so many people have doubted her and said she was just trying. It's a hoax. And she was trying to get attention. And that's what happened with Denise Huskins is, you know, they didn't take her case seriously because they thought that she was lying. And it turns out she, in fact, was not lying. 
And then Sherry Papini's case happened, I don't know, was it months or years later, but in the same state. So I think people had that in their mind, like, you know, that this could happen. And I just, it's really sad. I mean, they cut her hair off. She lost tons of weight. She was beaten up. Found on the brand, side of she was road. branded. Was she not branded? She was Burn. branded. Yeah. And they claim that she did it to herself for attention. Who claimed that? Who? The police. The police. The public. I'd say the public as well, too. Um, I don't know how much of the public. I don't know the public opinion about it, to be honest. But, yeah. Well, let's there put it this way. The media. The media's narrative. You know, they this poor woman, you know, her. for some reason, no one believed that this could possibly happen. Because if you look at people that are kidnapped, you know, she didn't really fit the mold. Because she wasn't sexually assaulted. She wasn't... Um, you know, forced into servitude. There was, there was no, uh, there was no reason for why anyone would have taken her and then, of course, released her. Uh, and look, see, Doctor Shiloh, it does happen. Overlap with personality disorders. There you go. So maybe you know. And I think she did have a personality disorder. There was some evidence of a history of that. But they also said it was because her her story was odd that th she claimed that or that her kidnappers were two females and that didn't fit you know with what the must profile. have been mm -hmm. with a profile and you know there was there was no she didn't report any type you know they, they couldn't find a logical reason for her kidnapping was mm -hmm. the issue and she claimed that one of the kidnappers wanted to let her go and one did not and they just found her story to be unbelievable but i don't know she came back in pretty bad shape mm -hmm. um uh, jc here says uh what kind of personality disorder all right, Chilo. I think he's talking yeah. to you. Huge yeah. overlap with personality disorders. Mostly access, access to stuff. stuff. Yeah, well. I'm not sure what that is. So yeah. that's per the personality disorders, right, Chilo? This is like oh, borderline, like histrionic. histrionic. Ah, there we yeah. go. Narcissistic would be right? Narcissistic, antisocial, right? They wouldn't themselves, would they? Oh, borderline. Yeah. Border I said borderline. I was right on top of that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, sorry, we got off on a yeah, got off on a no, no, it's okay. This is uh, interesting. That's the point of uh, uh, these good vocals. It really oh, okay, is. Okay, good. And uh, good. just some right. facts here. Sherry Papini disappeared on November second, two thousand sixteen, out jogging in Redding, California, mm -hmm. and uh, and then Thanksgiving Day, November twenty fourth, only a few weeks later, she claimed she was reportedly. Uh, she, uh, freed by her captors at 4 30 that morning yep. um so she was still re wearing restraints and she was found on the side of country road 17. Mm -hmm. interesting yeah 150 miles south of where she disappeared yeah it's really it's, it's bizarre but when bizarre happens you know when when people can't understand it when there's no logical explanation then there's mm -hmm. the blame game you know what I mean? that tends to yeah. be the the point i think that's what happens when we can't understand or wrap our head, heads around when we can't find the most logical explanation then we attribute guilt which yep. is a problem in these no crime conviction cases and which, in, yeah. in sherry's in sherry's case i do believe it they consider it still an open investigation someone asked if it was considered to be a hoax and i think the police are hesitant to say it was a hoax because of what happened with Denise, Denise. Hudson, because they got a lot of blowback because they didn't believe this woman, Denise. And it turned out her story was true. And she was in fact the victim of a violent crime. And, and they, they proved up, it. They got the offender. And then mm -hmm. Denise, her husband sued the police department rightfully yeah. because they slandered her and yeah. they won. So, yeah. um, and, and because I, and of that, I think the police in Sherry Papini's case are hesitant to say it's a hoax. So they say it's an open investigation. Um, and yes, there there was some allegations that she was talking to a man in Michigan um, that they were just having, you know, uh, an internet relationship. They hadn't they he came to town, but nothing happened. Who knows? They couldn't find anything on that guy. They they really tried to, you know, either pin it on him or say that she went there. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I agree. I think it's the right thing to do. I'd rather, as I say in the episode. I'd rather I'd rather somebody kind of play me and have a hoax and me believe them than the other way around. I would never want to deny a victim. I'd rather be, you know, fooled by a hoax. So. Yeah. And I uh, just want to give a quick shout out to Susan here who put a pretty interesting link in the uh, message area where somebody faked their death by using a weather balloon. Um, just click on that link when you can or copy and paste it because I don't want to um, it's it's 
it's kind of funny. It's kind of crazy. It's uh, something that happened in Florida, I guess. Huh. Um, and you can I've probably go down a rabbit one. hole on your own. But uh, this um, this Papini case is is something else. Uh, Fascinating. How long have you been like looking into that? I feel like that is. I feel... So Sherry's case, like Cindy James and these other cases, they're all just episodic. So we do like our 20 hours of research, do it for the episode. And then if there's an update, we'll sometimes do an update or we'll have someone come on like um, LA Not So Confidential came on to talk about Cindy James. So, you know, sometimes we'll revisit cases, that, but we really just do episodes on them and then they kind of just go on to the next. Yeah. Well, I guess my question is, wasn't that my question is really like, how, how often do you think of these things? Like, do you oh. just like, are you, when, when you can't sleep, are you thinking like, what is that? Like, how did that go down? Like, how did, how did, how did this come to be what it is now? I think that's why I can't sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Literally why I can't things that like keep me up at night. I think about the cases I want to do. I think about, yeah, why I never stop obsessing about certain cases, which we've talked about before. And I think about them all the time. And I like, mm -hmm. I'll come back to it. Even like we're doing this interview and I'm like, Oh God, what about that case? I can't remember. Like, did this happen? And, um, we did an interview today with, uh, someone for direct appeal too. And she was a really, really powerful um what would you say interviewee in that she talked about the fact that this case haunts her every day she's like i think about it every single day of my life i can't let it go and i understand exactly how that feels there are certain cases mm -hmm. things that whether or not you're personally and she's like i wasn't personally involved but she's like now i am and it's mm -hmm. you know sometimes you get that attached to a case and yeah i feel like you i feel like you guys have that do you not have that with them? Oh yeah. Right? What? No. What? No, we just we just we, we hit it and quit it. That's our that's our motto. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Done. Yeah. I'm saying this like preaching to the choir over here. Yeah. Well, okay, so what is your uh, and this is such a generic um question, I apologize, but what is what's like the one that you're just like that's the one I want to solve? Like that's the one that I want to see the 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 resolution for. Megan, you could go first. It's clearly Melanie McGuire because I can't, you know, I obsess about that one. It was my, it was like my baby, my project. And I still, well, I can I, tell you what happened. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was, it's my, I still like check the tip line furiously to see if like just one thing would come into, you know, show like whatever, either way. So I obsess about that one. Cindy James bothers me more now because um, I, it's the most bizarre case I've ever heard in my life. And John Bonet, uh, as I say, all day, every day, if I could just, if I could just figure out what happened to John Bonet, I feel like I'd be okay. And like, I could move on with my life. Uh, Lavina Johnson, Ellen Greenberg, also Cherry Papini, but Lavina Johnson's a big one for me because I don't feel like that case has gotten enough, enough press, enough attention. Um, and it's, it's mind boggling to me how, you know, she was an African-American woman who was murdered. And I think that if she was a white woman, I think her case would be solved by now. And it pisses me off to think about that case. Yeah. That one never gets any press is the problem. Never, but it's the most. You guys know that case or no? I think we no, go into some you. details. Yeah. Oh, I thought, I'm sorry. I thought we have spoken about that case before. I couldn't um, remember either. So basically, very long story short, um, Lavina Johnson was serving her country and she was found dead in a tent. Um, was this in Afghanistan, Amy? It was in Afghanistan. Um, she was, long story, the, the bottom line is they said suicide, but let me lay out the crime scene for you and then you tell me if you think this is suicide. Um, all right, so she had... Um, if you could look up uh, crime scene photos online and you could very quickly see the scene and automatically know it wasn't a suicide, but basically she was found with her, was it AK-47, Megan? I always get all those guns confused. I'm not a gun person, but, but she had I, her I, rifle. Her rifle was laying next to her and she was laying, it was her, a cot, a rifle, and she had, she was fully clothed, but they found that she had corrosive, um, 
what's it called, wounds that was put on her genital area and she had pieces of her tongue and pieces of her anus that were cut out of her body. She had severe burns. She was very, uh, very much beaten up. Um, she had her clothes on, but she was clearly sexually assaulted and somebody redressed her. So it's almost as if they claim she like, she sexually assaulted herself, put her clothes back on, then shot herself. Although if you look at how tall she was and how tall the gun was, it's impossible that she could have killed herself. And it was- The gun was also nowhere near her body, so- The gun was yeah. nowhere near her body. It was placed next to her. It was, it was the- Biggest military cover-up you can ever imagine. I'm not doing it any justice because I'm kind of just cherry-picking things that I can remember, but the whole case from start to finish is shocking. I'm not sure you'll find a case that will shock you as much as that. I mean, she was a young girl, and they and then they had the audacity to say she was upset because of a recent breakup with a boyfriend, so she killed herself. And it's just insulting. I mean, she was a strong woman. She was very close with her family. She was going to be going home for Christmas. And I mean, she was, I think what happened is she walked in on something she wasn't supposed to see. And that, you know, somebody killed her. And there's a huge military cover up. Amy, I don't remember, but was was she alleging someone assaulted her? No. Yeah, yeah. she did. About a week before her death, she um, went to... I don't know if they call it the doctor or the nurse, whatever, to um, get some treatment for a sexually transmitted disease that she contracted after she was sexually assaulted. Um, but she never reported it because it was apparently one of her superiors. So she kind of just kept it hush hush. So I, you know, her murder could have something to do with that, along with something to do with it. It, it won't take long. Go online. You'll see exactly who people think did this. I don't feel the need to say it because I don't know, you know, I don't think it's right to throw out names of individuals that we think might have done something unless they, you know, go through the, you know, the proper, you know, um, oh. process. No, no, you, 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 know, you, you can actually go right ahead. Uh, Lance is all, all about it uh, here, especially on, on Get Vocals. You know what? All you have to do, Google, and you'll see very much there was a high ranking uh, colonel. Is he a colonel? I don't know. There's a high ranking individual who was, I don't, what is the word called? He wasn't, he wasn't fired. Uh, it was a discharge. I don't, I guess it was an honorary discharge. They, they forced him to resign pretty much, but never said why. And there's a lot of speculation that he had something to do with this cover up and the higher ups know this and everyone's trying to protect everyone. And even if it wasn't that individual, the very nature of her injuries will tell any reasonable person that this woman was murdered this was not suicide this was the you know it's and it's such an overt cover-up um and the poor family the family could not get answers they had to jump through hoops to get any information they could and this is just one of several cases of military cover-ups you know this is not unfortunately this is not the only case of its kind but this one just doesn't get attention i think is frustrating yeah, and uh, Dr. Shiloh here says, uh, why cut out and burn her genitals and mouth to hide evidence? I mean, she was essentially yes. mutilated. She was mutilated. Um, yes. There's no other way. She was tortured. She was mutilated. It, there's no other way to really um, put it. And look at the crime but, scene photos. But to it, hide, I think, yes, to hide the evidence, to cover up the, the DNA. To well, get I, I think a bullet was cut out of her tongue because I think she was shot in the neck or in the you know, chin, neck, and I think they cut the bullet because they didn't want it to be traced back to a particular firearm because I don't think it came from her firearm. Not to mention the firearm that was found next to her was not even the firearm that was registered to her, I read in one source, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure about that. Um, and then, yes, I'm pretty sure there was a sexual assault that was trying to be covered up as well. The rule to suicide. Yes, by the military. Yeah. Hmm. And not covered, and again, just not covered by press. There were uh, uh, apparently some. There were news agencies that were going to cover it that backed away. Well, they even exhumed her body. Two major news agencies paid to have her body exhumed to have some more evidence tested, and then they did interviews, and then they decided not to air the shows. And some people believe it's because of you know the military has a lot of funding and connections, and they were pretty much 
threatened, bullied not to run the story. No major news outlet has ever run the story, which is shocking. Yeah. And Heidi says, there's so much effort, why not dump the body somewhere else? Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense, right? But do you think that leaving the body with that much damage and then it's it's still determined to suicide is more like a message? Like you can literally do whatever you want? No, I think it was probably in an area. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I was just going to say it was in an area probably where there were other people around that it would be too hard to transport the body. Also, we're talking about in Afghanistan. Um, I don't know where they were stationed, but there were tents and other things. I think it was an issue of not being able to transport and trying to cover it up. I mean, she also had there was also drag marks as if she was dragged into the tent. So I'm not sure if she was killed outside of the tent, then dragged in or dragged into the tent against her will and then killed in the tent. But based on the dirt marks on the back of her and um, in the tent, they were, you know, it was clear that she was dragged in there against her will, seemingly. Yeah. I just think someone didn't have access to transport mm -hmm. out. And that's why. Mm -hmm. You guys didn't really know that this would be so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're really not going to tell no. us who's wh what season two is about of direct appeal with what's going on. Wait, here. Haven't we dropped a lot of hints? No. Hints. All right. Oh, we could give another hint. It's I'm not a woman. It's I mean, not a woman. That's a, not a woman. One. That's a big one. It's not a female. We chose a male who's proclaiming mm. his innocence. I already said we said male. OJ. No crime conviction. <laughs> and, it's, and it's a case. It's a case that came from. We had a lot of people write in. <laughs> well, no, I didn't. What was it? He said OJ. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we had a lot of, yeah, we had a lot of people write in about this one. Um, so uh, a very, yeah, I'm trying to draw pants and give everyone a sneak preview without giving the whole thing away, you know? Just um, give it away. Uh -huh. Oh, we can't. Wow. Why aren't we, why you aren't use we giving it Pig Latin. No one understands pig Latin. What about gibberish? Do you guys know gibberish? No. No, no, no one does. Oh, when when does the season drop? We're dropping it in September. That's our plan. Except we just we, we, had a, we had a minor setback, which annoys me, but I'm trying to get over it. We had a minor setback. We had a pathologist who was working to help uh, determine cause of death because it's a no crime conviction case. So there was a battle about that. And she just dropped off after three months saying that she couldn't work on the case anymore. So that set us back a little bit. So if you or anyone you know is a forensic pathologist or a medical examiner, call us. Uh, uh, Tim, you, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a medical examiner. You're a pathologist. I'm a pathologist. Yeah. Together, we make, I mean, this is why we make such a great team. It's yeah. Just, we got it all. Whatever you we're want. Both, we're both professors. We're both doctors, pathologists. I mean, you name it. We got like it all. You guys mirror. are like our mirror. I mean, seriously, like the mirror version. I can't tell Didn't the difference you guys call us? What did you guys say that we uh, people call us the, <laughs> the women versions of you? What'd you say? What was it? We cried. He's, Lance asked, I remember, on like our first interview. People ask you, how does it feel to be the Tim and Lance of like, you know, <laughs> female crime or something? And I almost died and I still that laugh about that because I love it. Uh, yeah, no, it's true. true. We have, um, so we have, all right. So, oh, sorry, uh, Megan, are, are you drinking wine out of a gold goblet? I sure am. It's actually a corksicle and I keep my wine cold. She's very <laughs> fancy. Very, we're I doing know. really well. Apparently. I know. No, it was a gift from a friend because she knows I love camping, but now I just use it as my sole wine glass in the house. I know. It's like probably really tacky. Um, thanks and for asking. Guest eight guest eight two five eight was drinking straight gin just like uh, with some ice. <laughs> yeah, she's straight water by now. No, Maybe this like is a this is a high noon. So this is my uh, water. This is my high noon. So a little bit of high, what's a high, high noon? noon? The vodka fruit juice drink? No? Oh, oh okay. Lovely. A Amy usually does happy side of my happy hours like on the late. So my happy hour is more like I'm done with my day. So it's a happy hour versus like, you know. Mine's to anyway. get, get through bedtime and bath time and <laughs> dinner time. <laughs> Amy essentially goes to bed usually when I start my happy hour. She's like already in bed tucked in. I'm like, oh boy. Mm -hmm. Who's I'm Amy? Sorry, not to. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Guest 8258. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know exactly what you're talking about. How's your new podcast, guys? 
Who's which you one? We have, one today? Which one? We have 700 like of them. No, yeah. I just listened to. Um, no, no, yeah, yeah. What was Sorry, say that again, Aim. The one we were listening murder to. Murder by incarceration. Yeah. Oh, death by incarceration. Really yes. liked it. Really good. Very cool. We were listening to that one earlier. So. Yeah. Yes. Are you we loving were it? fortunate enough are... to be connected with those uh, fine individuals through our friend Maggie Freeling, who worked with Suave Gonzalez, and he wanted to do something on his own, and uh, yeah, she mm. made the connection, and really. Um, really good relationship that's going on right now uh we've just been delivering these uh bonus episodes just little teasers on what suave's like just his life um yeah uh, his artwork every just to, just to fully encapsulate and prepare people for um what what he's going to bring to the table and uh yeah we're dropping the first episode on june june 1st and then it's going to be weekly from there um it's really it's really you know, it starts off as like this uh, social movement type show, like so, like we need to make a difference yeah. doing something type show, uh, but it's not that at all. Like it is a little bit that, but it's like really fascinating to to hear somebody like Suave, who was incarcerated for over thirty years, take it to the DA of Philadelphia, like who's on his side, like mm -hmm. he's on his side, right. and he gets right. it. But the, uh, Larry Krasner, that was that's the episode that went up a couple of days ago. This interview that he did, he just he 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 knows he knows what happened to him and he knows what he has to do to change it and and he's using every every means possible so um that's that's my 45 second endorsement of the show because it's not about us tonight ladies it's not about us tonight <laughs> oh all right all right no it, it's really it's real i was so when i heard what it was about you know i listened to i saw that it dropped on la not so confidential on their feed and i was so excited once i heard what it was going to be about i was like oh this is so good I'm so excited for it. And it's something we could have our students listen to because it's really educational. You know, the, the the funny thing is that we've hooked you in with these bonus episodes, but episode two and then every subsequent episode is all about cryptids. Bigfoot. Oh, Mothman. Bigfoot, Mothman. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Giant alligators. <laughs> uh, winged creatures, uh, thunderbirds, children. Yep. Anything. Yeah. I love it. Pterodactyls. Okay. Some people, they, there's been reports of pterodactyls out there. Yeah. <laughs> and death by incarceration. Suave Evan from Death by Incarceration. They are not holding back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone Ancient said, aliens. oh, cryptids. Look, Shannon said, uh, oh, cryptids are lame. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> chupacabras is my spirit animal. Sorry, uh, no. that might, yeah, really, that we'll might get, be a we'll good segue into um our. You guys wanted to know what other project we we're working on. That might be a good segue, Please. like cryptids, like an uh, animal. Uh, actually, it's probably not the best segue, but um, I told, I think we talked about this along with direct that we're working on, which um is a lot was a little bit crazy to take on we are dropping a new podcast um i think james has said you know our producer in july we've recorded a lot of it but we're still recording with like interviews uh, i'm sorry like professionals and experts and stuff but have we talked at all about this the third yes come on can you tell them the name you can tell them the i mean name i'm gonna just feels like we don't work enough, I guess. He's like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this. And I'm like, I mean, are we really going to do this? He's like, yeah, this is, you know, this is what we need to do. Well, let's put it this way. You know, we get, uh, as you guys do, we get a lot of email and whatnot. We talk about on our show uh, relate to serial offending and serial murder. And I've talked about this a lot on our show because I teach this. And it's the class that fills up the fastest. It's, you know, the topic that people write in. Uh, second most i'd say a lot of people write about female crime but also about serial offending and then people are writing it's like can you do something like a little bit more educational like on serial offending like you do with women in crime can you not only tell us a story but can you also explain like theoretically like the motives the types and whatnot and you know we sat and thought about it and james really thought about it and said yeah we're gonna do this so we so are going to it's going it's all right it's called serial murder 101 with dr sax and we'll be dropping that in a couple of months and it'll be about 10 to 12 episodes in which we cover 
serial murder. It's not just covering like a case, um, you know, like a Ted Bundy, but we're we're covering everything. Like, what are the myths? What are the realities of serial murder? What are the types? What are the motivations? The why? How do we catch them? You know, what what's the real part? And so we go to a lot of experts, um, profilers. We talk to. Um, or we're talking to uh, Karen Smith from Shattered Souls. Do you guys know her? I love her. She's great. Crime scene investigation. She's great. She's yeah. just great. Um, a couple other people. And we actually talked to a serial killer as well. And I'll leave that part to be a surprise for people. What serial uh, killer? I just said I'd leave that part to be a surprise. That's the surprise, Lance. I gave every... Uh, sorry. So that's... Can we guess? That's kind of, uh, you can, but you won't know. It's not. He's not a, a mainstream. I love that I say that. He's not someone just, that you'll you'll guess right away, which is probably better. Mm-hmm. I'll just I'll just go down every single <laughs> go down the list. Wait, I, I can, mean, we got. I can tell you some funny anecdotal things though, if you if you'll appreciate. If you don't, I'm not going to tell you who it is because uh, all way, but I can tell you some funny like serial killer um, responses and rejections or whatnot. If you <laughs> would find that funny, because <laughs> like I reached me. out. You read a bunch of, I know what you're going to say, but I read out to a bunch. So, you know, David Berkowitz, son of Sam, he wrote back the most polite response immediately saying, I really appreciate your project and, and, you know, I wish you the best of luck. I'm only doing like, you know, work through this religious organization now. And I'm, this is where you can find my work. So no, thank you. And I was like, okay, well, that was my first rejection, but he was super polite about it. And I went, okay, well, I like that. Um, But then there was, um, oh God. Richard Cottingham, who I I don't, I didn't know too much about him. Um, He is working with someone to uh, tell his story and reveal some more of his murders. But he actually referred me to his agent and told me, like, sorry, I couldn't get back to you right away because I have a, a lot of projects. I'm juggling a lot of projects right now. I'm busy. And I'm like, wow, he's on death row juggling a lot of projects and doesn't have time to get back to me from from death row. And I went, oh, wow. okay, he's he's clearly got a life and then he's got some podcasts that he's doing he he's doing like he's doing a couple of things he's actually write, writing a book with someone he's got an agent a, a couple of these guys have he's agents. got an agent an agent. agent i'm not kidding you it's i mean you wouldn't like know his hand but he referred me to his publicist agent i went okay then do we need um, to, like do we need to kill people to get an agent like is that what we're yes. getting at here Actually, that's that's probably. I mean, I don't want to advise anyone of that. Obviously, not in this group. But um, yeah, yeah well, it, it's it, under it consideration. Was, sorry advised. to sorry to interrupt. Go on. Sorry. Not advised. And then there was. Um, I mean, oh, can you just yeah. tell them the one, please? There's one. I I'm not, I don't want to mention his name yet because we no, met don't mention his name. Mm-mm. There's one who has been. I mean, especially creepy, um, I'm going to say. He, unfortunately, I was trying to establish a professional relationship, but he asked me to send him ghost face pictures. <laughs> like, like, the creepiest. He's, like, like fear face, because those oh, are from faces like, that from his like... victim makes. No, what? like this. Like a scared face, like his victims oh, would from make you. when he killed them. Yeah, he yes. wanted Megan. And I was like, Megan, c- cease all communications. Do not yeah. talk to yeah. this person anymore. That was as creepy as it got. That was he wanted God, you to take it. pictures of yourself making scared faces to send to him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So and that's I was I said like, that was enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, no, clearly, just to be clear. I said, what? no, we're, we're not doing that. So, how many did you send? <laughs> <laughs> he asked again for another. I was another. The, the, there was another like incredibly odd one. I said like very clearly, no, I'm, I would never do something like that. And then like two or three messages later, he said, "Okay, I understand, but would you mind sending me a picture of your jaw moving around, contracting, and and I, I mean, it was just like it's you know." But the Shiloh, Dr. Dr. Shiloh is- says, "So how many did you send?" Send any Shiloh. I but you send Megan the ghost emoji now, and it's great fun for me. Says ghost, and it creeps me out every time. Anyway, that's some of the interesting experiences I had. Was it an instant no, or were you like maybe? <laughs> it was maybe. a it was a shock. To be honest, I've heard people say shocking things, and I don't really get you know surprised or shocked or offended. But I actually went like, oh. 
read it again, reread it. And I said, James, I need to read something to you. And he, we both sat down for a minute and went, okay. And realized this is, you know, a very different and, and honestly, and this is one of the things you'll find out if you listen to the podcast, it's a very different group of offenders than any mm -hmm. of us have ever dealt with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's so that's that. <laughs> that's wanna, do you want to uh, circle back with him and tell him that there's a so, willing participant that might not be what he's looking for, but or might or, or might or could possibly be. I mean, could could possibly. I will say I was more in his demographic than you were, but I mean, you know, I, I could can't let be him choosers know. here. <laughs> that's exactly i will tell you also he's a wonderful artist he sent me like pictures of stuff that he paints and other things and he's actually quite talented and i'm not i'm not i'm not that i'm not can i'm not actually completely out i did tell him i think we should probably not communicate anymore but um if he would still be open to we communicated for a while and i thought he was going to do an interview because he you know said he was going to and um, it seems that he just wanted to be a little more personal and I wanted to be a little more professional. So that's where we're at now. Gotcha. And when you said that he, he's a wonderful artist, the first thing that popped into my mind was just, he's, he only part, he only paints different variations of the scream by Monk. <laughs> <laughs> it's just no, a different a version of, of it. Uh, I like how someone said, so not BTK. No, it wasn't BTK. Um, but we do have someone on our podcast on the serial killer one who's going to be discussing uh, her uh, relationship or working relationship with BTK. And it's really fascinating. Isn't BTA, isn't BTK one of the few serial killers that didn't have a history of abuse? Correct. Most So one of the questions that most people ask is, um, do uh, most serial killers have a history of severe trauma? And the answer is absolutely. Um, there are a few exceptions. Um, be a bind towards uh, Dennis Radar was one of the few who had, you know, I mean, we can't always categorize it, but a pretty normal and seemingly, you know, a happy childhood. One right. of the few. Wow. Well, uh, we so, have crossed the hour here. Are you, what's up, Lance? One quick question. One quick yeah. question, because I know we've crossed the threshold. Um, <laughs> you, you, were, you, the two of you are already doing two podcasts, and you decided to do a third one. Uh, what made you decide to do a second one and then a third one? Uh, you must be very busy in your lives, so to find time to carve out for this, um, what, what, what drives you to do this? We are incredibly busy. I'm going to say, honestly, for this serial murder one, it's a class I teach, but James, I, I, he literally made me do it. He's like, we're doing this. And I was like, okay, you know, enough people want it and I get it. And I, you know, people want explanations and I love it. Um, direct appeal, obviously, you know, you know how direct appeal came about. I mean, everything happens organically. We did women in crime because so many people were interested in a woman in crime from direct appeal. And then after um, I think it was really after the, the 2020 episode aired, all these people wrote to us about, can you please help us? You know, we, we need some attention too. like, we need just someone to tell our story. And so we found all these cases that were worth our time. And, you know, we're just, I mean, we're passionate about it. We want, we want to be in on, on justice if possible. And I think honestly, we just can't help ourselves. I also think the more emails we get, we get a lot of emails from a lot of women who are either working in the field or studying to work in the field. Yeah. And they tell us they've been inspired or people that have taken action because of something they've heard. So I almost feel like now that we have a platform, it would be irresponsible not to continue to use it to, you know, bring some of these issues to the forefront. So yeah, no matter how busy we are, I think uh, we're here to stay. <laughs> I think um maybe quit our day jobs eventually and do this full time i like that um just let me just finish uh sorry um amy said that well and i'm agree but one of the best things i think is the emails that we get and, and like amy said people say thank you for like the educational part we didn't know this like the reality of this and we really like learning about this because you know they want to learn and i love I, I think as teachers you know as professors I, I love that part that people are so interested in the realities and learning and not just interested in, you know, crime shows that you see that aren't real. So 
when people are appreciative of that, it just makes me want to like work much harder to give them that. So same, same as, as a fellow leader, same. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was going to ask what? that. That this brings it, this brings it all full circle. Um, at the beginning, I was saying I, I walk out of these conversations having learned something from the two of you, and it is no exception this evening. The biggest takeaway I have that I did not know before entering this conversation was how Megan loves to lay down some fat beats. She was <laughs> killing it with those fat beats. What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> when you had like a bad connection, it was like do do do. It was on a loop. <laughs> what someone say it was yeah. cross space club or something? Yeah. Oh, I'm so did. sorry. I don't know what happened, and I didn't know we sorry. were not connected. Sorry. And... Yeah. I'm, no. I'm hoping you do it again. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say the best thing I learned was about you know Megan's like ghost face or something like that. But okay. No, that's pretty good. Idea. That was, that was pretty good. good. That was you pretty want good. to show it to the crowd? <laughs> Hold on. Let me take a screenshot and I'll send it to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Well, um, thank doctors, you guys for having us. Yes. Doctors Megan Sachs and Amy yes. Schlossberg. Yes. Welcome. Hey, okay, guest 258. <laughs> Doctor <laughs> guest 8258. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been uh, this has been great. It's always great talking with you too. Always great. Thank you yes. so much. We love catching up with you guys. Thank you so much yes. for having us. It's always fun. Yeah, At some point, it really should be about you guys and not just us. But I do like that it's about <laughs> well, us. Well, we have to host something and invite them. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we don't. We're not. We're not. Are you guys going that. to Con? No, I don't think so. No, no not yeah. not this year. Virtually? You guys know. Not virtually. Are you going virtual? Virtual? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we're gonna yeah. do virtual. What about you too? Yeah. yeah, okay. I think we're doing virtual too. I don't know. I'm going. I don't know what Megan's talking about. I'll be Amy, there. You're not going. You I think am. you're going. If they let me go. I'm going. Oh, um, all right. Going. Amy's going. I'm 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 going virtually. <laughs> I'll be there virtually. So I'll meet up with you. We'll pop into a room and say hello for sure. <laughs> yes. Oh, Charlie's going. And I'm, we, okay, bye, guys. I'm, Thank you so so much. Thank I'm dying so much. to I'm dying to to hear more about your new shows and everything, and and all of these little teasers that you dropped along the way. <laughs> Going to be great. <laughs> yeah, let us know when uh, when they are out, and we will uh, we'll talk to you again. That'll be great. We'll have you back. Thank you, guys. Before all right, guys. We, before we wrap, real quick, yeah. real quick, I just want to say we won't be here next Thursday. We will not be here next Thursday. We will be here next Wednesday. That's huh? Wednesday the 12th. And we are going to have a little bit of a fundraiser. Not a huge fundraiser, but a little bit of a fundraiser, which will be raising money for billboards in the upstate New York area for Erica Franilich, who uh, disappeared. Um, give me the year on that, Tim. 85? 85, 84, 85. Yeah. 86 says 80, Jillian. Mid eighties. Mid. Okay. Jillian mm -hmm. is right. 1986, uh, October, 1986. And, uh, our nonprofit organization, private investigations for the missing has been looking oh, into right. this with the investigator, Greg Overacker. And we organize some billboards that are going to be erected in the area of the most traffic up there. Um, we already know that all of the information, all of the episodes, everything that we put out there, we already know that that is in the ears of the people up there. So to see this reminder for, you know, how long are they going to be there? Four or five weeks. We're going to have them up for four or five weeks. Open for about four or five weeks. Yep. Yeah. So next Wednesday, the 12th, 9 p.m. here on Get Vocal. Uh, really a small fundraiser. So anybody who wants to swing by, yeah, Jillian said about $1,800. Um, Where are you going to announce how to donate? Yeah. Are you going to yeah. announce then how to donate in case? Yeah. We yeah. Like we are Megan. Yeah. We're just going we're just gonna, to gonna talk about it and not actually say <laughs> donate here. Come on. <laughs> like stupid. Duh, Megan. Um, yeah. Tim's face got red on that one. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry. I knew I was being a dick. <laughs> uh, just being a jerk. Uh, no, so no, sorry, we Tim. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we we're, we're gonna do it on Get Vocal, um, but it it is gonna be a a donate through GoFundMe. So we don't want to kind of confuse that because you can Got actually it. you can donate to us, I suppose, uh, via VCoin here on Get Vocal, but that is not where we're running the fundraiser next week. So okay, are you gonna post, you'll post all that information? We sure yeah. will, yeah. Cool. Yep. Wow, you didn't get mad at Amy for asking that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, what do you what? think, Amy? What do you, no, actually, Amy, we're not going to post it at all. No, actually, <laughs> I'm just going to maybe send it to my like. I'm going to text it to my friends. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of All right, folks. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, Shannon's got a good point. Tim and Lance have about. I don't know. That's that's like a hundred trillion V coins. We have no idea what it's worth. So please do not donate in V coin. It's probably yeah. thirty cents. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, this yeah. is fun. All right. This Good is time. fun. This is fun. Thank, Thank you, so you guys. Much, it was awesome seeing you. It was awesome great seeing you too, as well. All Thanks right. Thanks for having us. Take care, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.